Thank you for joining us, Leanne. Um, yeah, so let's just start off by talking about a lot of questions that a everyday person or shopper might might be looking to to get some input on. So first, let's introduce you and tell us a bit about how you got started in denim and design. Sure. So I'm Leanne Jay. Um, and how I got into, I am a denim designer also. Um, been specializing in denim for probably the last 10 years, 13, 10 to 13 years. It's been a long time. So I've been in the industry for about 14 total. Um, I uh, have a real passion towards sustainability within the denim sector and within design. Um, my journey began when I was at college. I studied fine art and then I went on to study fashion design and marketing at the London College of Fashion. After then, I also studied product design and development for the fashion industries at the same university. I graduated and my first job was working at Burberry, um, where I got to work in many different departments and in one department in the design department, they were starting the denim line, um, at the time, very first time for Burberry, I believe, um, or at least when I was there, there was no denim line. And then, um, part of the project I was on was helping to create one. Um, and through this project, I got to travel to Turkey and visit my first factory, which was a denim factory. And I fell in love instantly. And that's where my kind of passion and journey began with denim. Um, yeah. And I've okay. continued to work within it and love it and haven't got bored of it yet. Yes. I think, I think as somebody previously referred to it, it's like the denim bug once it bites. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's true. It's hard to shake off. Yeah. So, um, let's get a little bit into what you do for your living as a job and, and, and how do you forecast denim trends? I thought that was a really fun element of, of what you do. Yeah. So day to day, um, as a denim designer, you're constantly keeping your eyes peeled and open. You're looking for inspiration wherever you can find it. Um, it's not so obvious sometimes. Um, you can find it in the smallest places just by going to the shops, people watching, having a coffee outside in the street and watching people as they walk past, um, or even just going to exhibitions, art exhibitions or fashion exhibitions or exhibitions about architecture or yeah, just the most obscure things you can find inspiration from. Um, also enjoy watching music videos and seeing like the styling people do in those. Um, film and TV is huge as well. Um, and also when you forecast uh, trends, you can Google like what will be coming out in 2024 or 2025 uh, because the film producers already start for like planning um, what films they're going to be doing so you can get an idea. And especially with like um, period dramas or period films, you know, that can really heavily influence trends. So it's really important to look at what's going to happen. Um, I also look at news and social channels to see what kind of uh, social movements there are, what mm -hmm. people are feeling, um, how they're behaving, are they revolting against a certain movement, um, and how that can influence fashion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who knew that we would have a pandemic and how much that would influence the way we dressed. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a prime example of like something really obscure having a really big impact. Um, and uh, traveling as well is huge for me. I love, even when I travel if for work or for personal, I love seeing other cultures um, and seeping, seeking inspiration from that and allowing it to seep into my skin and my core just by absorbing myself in the culture. Um, I love doing that. Um, and it's lovely. You can get like really beautiful color palettes as well, just for going to different parts of the world. Um, and then just keeping afloat with, uh, generally what's going on with the industry. So fortunate enough, um, as a designer that we have trade shows, 
mm-hmm. um, which maybe consumers don't know about. So there's huge events where loads of fabric producers um, will collate their most recent innovations um, and their fiber innovations as well. So it might not just be cotton that we look at within denim. It could be hemp or any new fiber that's trying to um, come to surface. I say new, obviously they've always been there, but trending. Um, And looking at new innovations in terms of dyeing, Um, and processing so the machines that we use to process garments as well can have a direct impact on the trends and how Mm -hmm. we execute um, the trends to how we interpretate them in a sustainable way which is hugely important Um, Mm -hmm. and then yeah I think that's kind of it really I've covered a lot (laughs) sorry no I love that it's you're 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 saying how where you garner your inspiration also has to do with uh, forecasting the future of denim, which I think makes sense, like a constant nod back and forth. Um, Yeah, absolutely. It's really important um, and it's a constant process. It's not like um, you stop at any point. Um, You kind of, even annoyingly when you're going out with friends and trying to be social and switch off and (laughs) back, you'll see something out the corner of your eye and you'll be like, quickly take a picture (laughs) so I don't forget that um and yeah it's it's incredible even when you're on holiday you're constantly like oh look at that and look at this um it's really difficult to switch off actually as a designer um but you're constantly looking and collating and archiving all the different bits that you find inspirational so then when you do do a trend report you can gather all that into one and it's Mm. just like you're just painting the picture that's in your head onto a page for your customer to be able to see wow wow amazing um so yeah kind of along that line um how do you balance you know you you brought up sustainability how do you balance you know seeking trends and sustainability because sometimes i feel like those two things can seem contradictory um yeah so tell us about that yeah that's a great question actually um and i'm really happy you asked the question um it can be a challenge for sure. It's, it's something that we have to consider greatly um, or I consider greatly um, because I try to be as um, considerate as possible when I'm creating trends for customers. There is a demand for newness all the time and it's about balancing the newness and doing it in a sustainable way, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's There's a choice that you have And it's about the knowledge you have and how you can execute certain trends in a sustainable manner. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's lots of technologies, as I mentioned before, that look at um, executing like heavily acid or bleach washes, but Mm -hmm. by using different technologies like ozone, for example. So that's like a direct way of answering if there was a huge like bleach out trend, you can Mm -hmm. do it in a sustainable way. Um, But for sure, there is the argument of mass production um, and how is that ever sustainable? So that's why it's a challenge for sure. Um, But I think you can just try to be the best that you can do at the time that you're doing it. (laughs) Yes. uh, Yeah, I think that that makes sense. Just tackle it as it comes up. Mm -hmm. Um, So there isn't a lot of universality in terms of metrics and regulations uh, for claims that companies make in regards to sustainability. Um, and we can see that, you know, anyone anyone can stick a green tag on something. Um, so how can consumers avoid this greenwashing um, and find truly sustainable businesses? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. Um, it's really difficult. And uh, recently there's been a lot of companies saying that they are sustainable Um, and I think it's great and I want to celebrate the fact that a lot of people are doing some really positive changes uh, because I think it is really good that everyone's trying Um, and something is better than nothing for sure Uh, but there is a lot of bad press um, Mm. or maybe not so accurate I think a lot of people are elaborating Mm. on what they are doing and and it's also, it's, it's misadvising the consumers, ultimately. 
um, and it's not giving them, it's not empowering them with the correct um, information. And I think that's really important. I think consumers deserve to be given them correct information um, and then allowed to make their own choices. And I think the best way to do that is just through transparency. If every company can be transparent rather than use the word sustainable and give complete transparency from the fiber where it was, where the cotton was grown, for example, mm -hmm. right the way through to when the garment was finished mm -hmm. and how it was, how it was received to store. I think that would be the most ultimate way to give the consumer all the information. For sure, that's a lot of information to give and it can be quite overwhelming. Um, so there definitely is a balance, but I think if there's a way that you can scan a QR code, for example, and the brand can give the complete life cycle of a product, then you're completely handing over the power to the consumer to decide if they want to buy into that product or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess, you know, interestingly enough, as a designer, you're also, you're also a consumer. Um, so I wonder how much, uh, this also plays into you know, when you decide who you're going to work with um, and what brands to follow, um, yeah, what what sustainability features do you keep your eyes uh, like peeled for? Yeah, um, I. It's a curse and a blessing that I'm a designer <laughs> because I obviously look at lots of brands and companies, uh, which means when I find a brand that are really aligned to my values, I want to invest. Um, or I'm aware of them so that when I do need something in my wardrobe, I can invest into their products. Um, I look for sharing the same values as me, trying to be the best. I'm not seeking perfection within any, any company. I think it's impossible. Um, there's definitely limitations for sure in how good you can be because ultimately buying another product is not sustainable in the first place. Mm. Um, but when I look to invest into a company, um, or even work with a company, I try to make sure that both our values are aligned and that we're both trying to be better in the future, are uh, looking at the same sources um, of avenues to do that by uh, and try to work together in unison to get to that point. Yeah, and yeah, like, you know, you mentioned they can't be perfect. Um, yes, which definitely... Um, that's definitely come up a lot, especially as we have conversations with, you know, people working in different industries. I wonder what's like a sustainability feature that you personally latch onto, or like, is there a consistent thing that you look for? Um, like, oh, is it, you know, how the cotton is grown or, um, you know, how they treat their workers, you know, like what, what element for you is uh, like a non-negotiable in terms of sustainability? Um, social responsibility is a big one for me. I really like to know, um, who has made my garments and where they've come from. Um, I think social is, is quite underrated as well, um, as a topic within sustainability. Um, and I think it probably seeks, it probably gathers the most, uh, contra controversy in a way because so many people try to mask that in companies that say that they are sustainable. Mm. Um, it's just being fair to the workers, making sure workers are getting, um, a living wage mm. and being treated fairly and nicely. Uh, I do have, see, it's a problem again, it's a blessing and a curse being a designer because my eyes are open to so much and I'm aware of so much because I'm trying to help other brands change. Um, so I have a lot more of a spectrum to look at than maybe your average consumer. So I do look at fine details. I do look at how well a garment's made, how it's going to last just because of the construction. I do look right down to the fiber um, and how what that item is made from. I do make conscious choices about whether that product can be uh, biodegradable or how I would then get rid of it if it was not biodegradable. Mm -hmm. um, I make choices before I even go to the shops that I actually need that product. So mm. there's lots of, it, there's not really a straight answer to that question, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that that could be a helpful principle for a consumer to apply to, to kind of have a frame of reference before going into the shop. Um, 
mm -hmm. something to look out for, um, whether that's material or construction or, or something. Um, okay, very cool. Fabulous. So I guess we're going to kind of wrap up this portion, but I guess if you had like a last note for a, a shopper out there or something to, to help them get started on their sustainability journey um, or when they're deciding whether or not to engage with a trend. Yeah, okay. So um, if you're looking to decide whether or not to engage in a trend, make sure you don't have the products in your wardrobe fast that could meet mm -hmm. those needs. I would say is probably the first port of call. Because there's so much styling um, and personalization that you can do to your garments already uh, to meet most trends, um, probably that are already coming out or emerging. And the coolest way is to do it yourself, I think, is to just have your take on what you think that trend is, rather than being maybe not dictated by other brands, of course. But yeah, if you have the needs to do it, then you can do it by yourself. If not, um, go to a retailer that you believe in and if they answer the questions that you need answered then you know that you're going to the right place if they don't answer the questions that you want answers to then you know that something's amiss um and maybe they're not being as transparent and honest as they could be yeah i think that's a that's an excellent point both of those um yeah see what already works in your wardrobe and to that point i'll say that i'm noticing some like bell bottom workout pants are coming back out. Um, mm -hmm. And I wore those in middle school and I still have them. So I was like, well, this trend just came back. So I'll just yeah, wear what I already had. Exactly. Um, Don't throw anything out. It's all circular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then to the second point, like, yeah, to, to ask directly uh, the questions, because I think sometimes as a consumer, it can be overwhelming to think that you have to do all this research, but you can also just ask. Uh, and see what the answers are. So thank you for that. Uh, very helpful. Um, excellent. So that will wrap up this uh, conversation for shoppers, consumers, and everyday people.